INEC has deregistered 74 political parties. 18 survived the exercise and reactions have been swift. Plus, the announcement of the Northern Security Operation, Shege Kapasa, is facing its criticism, just like its southwestern counterpart, Amoteku. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome to the program. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has deregistered 74 political parties on the grounds that they failed to meet the requirements for party registration. The deregistered parties are obviously not happy about this and have said they would take legal action against the commission. In reaction to these as well, the Inter-Party Advisory Council of Nigeria has asked the commission to reverse its decision that it was done without observing due process and the provisions of the law. Joining us to help make sense of these are two very distinguished guests. I'll start with legal practitioner Kristen Wogu. Thank you very much for coming on the program. My pleasure. And of course, we have the lady here, political analyst Adan Jamanze. Thank you Thank for you. your time. You. All right. Before we get started, I think it's right we should take a look at the video of INEC chairman announcing the deregistration of the party um, at a press conference. The commission has determined that 16 political parties have fulfilled the requirements for existence based on section 225A of the 1999 constitution as amended. 75 political parties did not satisfy the requirements of the fourth alteration to the constitution. However, one of the political parties, the Action People's Party, filed a suit in court and obtained an order restraining the commission from deregistering it. Consequently, the party remains registered pending the determination of the case by the court. The new political party, Boot Party, BP, registered by court order after the 2019 general election will continue to exist. Accordingly, 74 political parties are hereby deregistered. With this development, Nigeria now has 18 registered political parties. From 92 to 18, before we get to the legalities, what is your reaction, Ada? I mean, for me, I said fantastic. Uh, reason being, I don't know what we're doing with 92 parties. Uh, some of the names, I had to take my time to look through the, I'm like, okay. And during, it was a bit of confusion for us, especially during the elections, because you could, you could try to find the party that you, party of choice that you wanted to vote for, and you couldn't find that. And then we were seeing new parties, we didn't know their candidates. So I think it's a, it's a step towards the right direction, because at least 18, we can work with that for now. <laughs> okay, I want to get your reaction before we get to the other parts. Yes, I beg to respectfully disagree with Ada. In my thinking, um, we actually need more political parties. We are evolving a democracy. And um, we should be allowed to grow the system. The system will ultimately determine whether we need more or we need less. Well, no. is it, isn't it her point about overcrowding? Is it in the current structure of 92 political parties, even at the presidential, state, and local councils? Yeah, actually, um, like I had a brief discussion with Ada before we went on air, and I told her, in my thinking, we actually need more parties to accommodate different interests, different um, regions, different professions. I mean, we just need to have more space to express political interest. Eventually, we'll get from the best, because that's what Nigeria needs, and that's what Nigeria has been lacking all these years, the best. And the best has to come from the crowd, and not just by um, the will of man or autocratic uh, impositions. 
Okay, let's take a look at the legalities of this. Um, one party, as we saw in that press briefing, um, went to court and have stopped INEC from deregistering it. And other parties are saying that they are going to uh, go to court as well. My question is, will they succeed, considering that there was an amendment of the Constitution as of 2017, um, this, the, the passage, the section rather, that INEC chairman was referring to? In spite of that, do you think that they will succeed? I believe they will. Now, the chairman is citing the Constitution, Section 22A of the um, 1999 Constitution as amended. And in fact, the provision says the INEC shall have power to. It doesn't give INEC an automatic deregistration power. It says, look, my car can do 240 kilometers per hour. Am I going to do 240 kilometers? Uh, but what is the point of having power if you can't exercise it? You yeah, know, you have to exercise powers with discretion. Now, the part, some of the parties had just had a one shot at elections in the last um, uh, 2019 elections. They've not really found their bearing. And next thing you come, you say you deregistered them. I don't think it was fair. I think it's, um, it's an abuse of power in my thinking. Okay. You, you see, the power is there. Nobody denies that the power is there, but it's a power that needs to be exercised with caution, with discretion, with properly with, 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 taking into consideration. Ada, Ada is smiling. Let's get her to react to your position. I mean, you know, like he said, we had a conversation before the, the show, and I understand his point of view, but I still stand on the ground that, yes, it's, it's good. We're, we're a growing nation, so some of these parties need time. But I don't see even if you give them the next five years, some of these parties are still going to be very irrelevant. Now, because of the way the nation has actually built herself to be. So I think for me, I feel like in order, in, yes, we want to try to allow people opportunity to express their political views, but we also want to build a strong nation and we can't afford to be of, to be at that position where we have too many divided opinion, when we can actually come together, form a stronger opinion, and let that opinion be louder than the parties that have been there for over 10 years. You know, wh while you were speaking, I, I actually was taken aback by your position because most lawyers that I've spoken with say, yes, they should reduce um, the number of political parties. So you're saying that we should increase them. Uh, you know, just puts a lot of question in my head. And one of them is, if we have this, one of the things you mentioned was the aesthetics. People can barely remember these parties. And from your own assessment, in the last election, they could barely put up candidates, not to talk of, um, you know, becoming a voice that people can hear. Wouldn't it be more productive if they pull their forces together, like some of these smaller parties, come together, be stronger, and have more weight? Now, you find that, let's even um, take that for granted without conceding that that's what we need. The process of getting there would not be the way I think the INEC chairman had gone with it. Now, look, these parties, they had rigorous registration processes. They should spread across the nation. There are certain requirements. I've been involved in party registration. And eventually, INEC registered them based on the, and, and, and of course, refused to register others. So that means that this one had scale trees, like somebody had gone through the university and gotten a first class, and, and uh, the next time you come the, and say, it, well, it's it, been it's, revoked. It, yes, that so is, what so, would have been the right way for INEC to handle this situation I now? I think two ways. I, I, was, I was thinking about two ways. One, it could have gone judicially, go to the court, because it's, it has powers. They, it has been given powers to do something. I, I, in fact, it's like INEC shall have powers. Now, it needs, I believe it needs another intervention, either the legislative house or the court, to actually put that in perspective so that in the course of appropriate hearing, every other person can come in with a view that will ultimately produce a balance. You know, you could say, yes, this was considered opinion, but unilaterally going on air to deregister parties that had appropriately been registered, going through due process, 
in my opinion, is inappropriate. Like I said, I'm beginning to see your point, but then the argument still persists. Let's, let's move a little away from that so we can capture as many areas as we can of this conversation. And that's some of the reactions that are coming in. We have IPAC, that's the Inter-Party Advisory Council in Nigeria. They're saying that the deregistration of the political parties, the decision runs contrary, let me use the word, contrary uh, with the provisions of the law. Does it really? I come back to you. Yeah, really. Thanks, Felicity. The point is, IPAC is saying that they are in court with INEC already, to, not to deregister parties, and that the ruling is going to come on the 17th of February. Yeah, I think I saw that story, but it wasn't confirmed whether the case was actually in court. Or... Well, that's um, a matter of, uh, any matter in court is a matter in the public jurisdiction. Anybody can do a search. So, so do you so think that INEC, INEC is preempting? Uh, yes, uh, that's exactly what it, if it's actually in court and I don't see why IPAC should come and say they have a matter in court if it's not in court. It means that INEC is actually running contrary to the rule of law. It, it's undermining the court system and for an arbiter of that magnitude, it's, 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 it's not right. All right, let's take another reaction. This time is from uh, the national chairman of the um, All Grand Alliance Party, a AGAP, I think that's what it should be, A-G-A-P, okay, Shikwendo. He's describing INEC's decision as unconstitutional and an evidence of misplaced priority. He obviously agrees, but do you? I mean... I understand where he's coming from with um, INEC and the legality of the deregistration. But this is my question. Were some of these parties informed before this final information of, before this final conference of deregistration, the, uh, deregistrating the party? Because these are some of the conversations that we need to have. What were the conversations being had, be, uh, being had behind closed doors? These things, some of these parties were aware I still stand on the ground that, yes, I understand that it was a very rigorous process to register these parties, which I feel that if you, if you have to put them through this process, then why get to this point? We would have avoided all this uh, situation, but it is still a way forward. Okay, um, I'm going to come to you to ask you about a reaction that we got from the um, National Youth Council of Nigeria. But before that, I understand we have the chairman of ANRP, that's Tokwe Fashero. Thank you very much for joining us on the phone. Yes, thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, thanks for inviting me. All right, thank you. So what is your party's position? Will you be going to court like the others? Absolutely. Um, in fact, we are one of the 33 parties that are taking this matter to court. However, the INEC, in its uh, unfortunate infinity, decided to preempt the judgment of the court, which is coming up on the 17th of uh, February. And they decided to do what they did, which is um, totally against the spirit of the law. And they deliberately misinterpreted the Constitution, uh, the, in fact, the amendment that they uh, deemed to rely on. So it's a very egregious and unfortunate uh, incident and uh, reminiscent of the impunity that this government is uh, now known for and popular for. How confident are you that if you go to court, I mean, the court is going to rule in your favor? So, uh, well, well, no, no, I, I, we still have faith in the judiciary in as much as we've seen uh, that the judiciary has come under attack under this government. After all, uh, they removed the whole chief justice of the federation in such an ignominious manner. However, we still have faith that we will get justice through the courts. It's very simple. Even a kindergarten lawyer will be able to interpret that law, uh, interpret that, uh, that constitutional amendment and tell INEC clearly that it has heard. So um, we, don't, we don't have to have a PhD in law in order to see that the last election in the last uh, ward, in the last local government in this country, must be conducted before INEC can exercise uh, that supposed, uh, supposed power that they, that they have. Okay, how do you consider the possibility that uh, the courts might rule against you? And if it, this happened, what are your options? Well, uh, well, well, of course, the, court, the federal high court is where we are. And no matter what the ruling is, it can also still be appealed up to the Supreme Court. Uh, however, we have every confidence that uh, any judge will see clearly uh, 
what has happened and reverse that position of the of the INEC. So we are very hopeful. We are very hopeful that uh, this this decision will be reversed. Okay, w would you consider, would your party and other parties consider a measure to strengthen your force so that people can take you a bit more seriously? Well, listen, it's it's it's, it's left to Nigerians, but let me tell you what's going on. That um, um, the situation is that. The two parties that have governed the country have actually battered the people to the level that people are only just seeking for a few thousand naira to tie over four years. And so we are we are faced with what they call in the democracy tyranny of the of the majority. Um, you know, so this idea that people should take us seriously if we match, look, we have 190 million to two to two hundred million people in Nigeria. We have 90 political parties. I don't believe it's too many. And in the US and the UK, they have more than 60 parties each. There's nothing wrong with that. Political expression cannot be stymied. And that's what these um, people are trying to do. Because, however, the, the very, very interesting and unfortunate thing is that they have also, um, they have also acted with impunity and without even contacting any of the parties. They treated us like cattle. And we must let them know that we're not cattle. If they have been used to dealing with charlatans in the past, they have another thing coming. In fact, they've beaten more than they can chew in this instance. And that, you know, unfortunately, they have undignified themselves because they cannot be undignified. Us. We are, we are digni dignified people. We are, we, are, we are respectful people. And we will be so treated. All right. Um, I'm afraid that's where we have to uh, thank you now for your time. Thank you so much for talking to us. Well, Okay, so something he said that just triggered a thought in my head. He said um, the United States has, over, I'll, I'll take that question to you now, the United States has over 60 political parties, but the one that we hear of, we know that some of these parties are grassroots parties, and even in India, the parties climb through the ranks. You have the one that's at the national level and the ones that are at the lower levels. For the US, for instance, we have the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. These are the two major parties that you keep hearing about. So... When you, he talks about the fact that they have all these parties, is that the scenario? Um, I think I alluded to that earlier. Can we have that kind of situation replicated in Nigeria where we have maybe some major national parties and some other parties that serve different localities? Well, see, my position is um, this, that whether we have two, three, four, a thousand, like I understand they have in India, the system has to grow those parties to whatever capacity that they have. Now, you see, I am deeply involved in political party matters, and I know that one major thing political party does is to breed leadership. Now, eventually, you find that one person moves from one party, growing party, after having been um, midwifed and goes to another party, and then eventually to another party, and eventually comes out a leader. We can't take away that from Nigerians, because that's exactly what this arbitrary position of INEC wants to achieve. We need to allow the space to evolve by itself and come to exactly what we need. Now, you talk about the US, you talk about the UK, eventually there are two major parties, and same for Nigeria. There are really two major parties at the end of the day. But these other climbs, they grew into that. Nothing says that somebody, a party cannot come from the rear, ultimately, to come to Talk become to the, the major lines. party. All right. Um, I was going to ask you before I got um, sidetracked, but I was going to ask you, the National Youth Council of Nigeria has described the deregistration of parties as a good omen and says it shows that the commission is poised to do well in 2023. Um, does it really, besides the aesthetics that you mentioned, of what benefit is this uh, deregistration? Will it allow INEC to be a bit more effective? No. I have a problem with INEC. Okay. It's a personal problem with INEC. My reason, my issue with INEC is when we look at when we do when we look at the assessment of the last elections and look at how well they did, um, it, it, there's a lot that we need to ask questions regarding. Yes, um, when it comes to the party, I still stand my ground and say yes, I I, I support the the registration, but we also have to. I, I I understand what he is saying. It allows the opportunity for freedom of political speech. But now we're looking at Nigeria now. Okay, let's look at the reaction of the two major parties. We have the APC coming up to endorse INEX decision. And um, one of the spokespersons, um, what is his name now? Yekini Nabena. Uh, he is saying that 
um, it's a good thing that Nigeria should consider having a two-party system. In your opinion, are we ready for that? We've, tr we've tried two-party system before in Nigeria, and we found that it ended up in crises, a lot of crises. That was before. Well, that was before. This is now. Well, of course, uh, nothing says it, that also wouldn't happen. You must give people expression. Let people fail gallantly or eventually survive. Uh, through the system. So I don't know whether I would have expected any less from APC because, of course, um, ultimately, they, will, they, they are believing that they will reap hugely from the action. I want to believe that their thought, their, their thought line. But really, for the, for the good of the nation, for the good of leadership, for the good of democracy, I, look, there is even no problem if ultimately Due process is followed and the registrations becomes the ultimate goal. But in this case... Yeah, look, you have a problem with the way... Yeah, the way process it was is the process wrong. Was. And, and, and that's, that's, process is as important, if not more important, than outcome. You saw the party chairman saying that they, they never heard anything about this. That tells a whole lot for a nation. Okay. Um, I'm thinking about asking you on, uh, you know... Um, <laughs> I think I've asked you this already, what better approach INEC would have taken, and you said due process. So I'm going to leave it there and go to you. Still on the APC reaction, um, they're saying that the umpire uh, has done well, like I said, and they're going to allow for more serious players and more serious parties to come into the Nigerian political scene. Is that something you emphasize as a result of this deregistration? No. Do you believe? Do you believe that statement? Yeah, my, I, 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 I agree with him yeah. because you know everybody would say it's to the benefit of their own political party. But the thing now is, what's the what's like you said? I understand that there's there's need for process, but I, again, how what is the opportunity that APC has been letting the younger people? What opportunity have they been given? We haven't really received that. It's, it's the same people over and over again. So I really don't see that changing. I just see that they see the deregulation as an opportunity for them to keep being one of the powerful parties of the country. That's just it. All right. I guess um, oh, final thoughts before we wrap this up. I really think I next should reverse this decision and promptly to so that it doesn't enter into another crisis. Nigeria is actually, we've not been concentrating on development. It's just been from one crisis to the other, the judicial crisis, legislative crisis, executive crisis. Security crisis. Security crisis. I don't think the INEC chairman should add to all of that crisis. Thank you very much You're for welcome. coming on the program. Thank you so much. I'll be back with you guys in a bit, but let's go for a short break. And when we return, we'll be talking about Operation Shege Kapasa experiencing post-birth pains. Stay with us.